Hey, it's Zach from How Chew. Today I'm going to show you how to build your own 3D printed Nintendo Switch arcade cabinet. Simply print all the parts, glue them together, and then install the optional electronics. These electrical bits will charge your Switch while you play, as well as provide additional cooling to help keep your Switch nice and chill. You can also connect USB controllers to the front of the cabinet since all of these electronics connect directly to a powered USB hub. If you don't want to install the electronics, that's okay. This thing is still really great as a non-electronic device. In either case, just remove the top of the cabinet, insert your switch, and play. Now if you don't have a 3D printer, there's still a bunch of other ways to get your model printed. Check out the full guide in the video description for a detailed list of these options. Also in the video description, you'll find the 3D printable model itself, as well as links to the tools and materials you'll need to complete this project. The estimated cost of materials for the electronic version of the Switch arcade cabinet is about $50, and no soldering is required. Now here's a special shout out to Concave Chest who designed this amazing arcade cabinet and uploaded it to Thingiverse. Now there are two different methods that you can use for building yours. You can build it where you just 3D print the parts and glue them together and there are no electronics in it and then you slide your switch in. And then there's a version where you can add some electronics that'll charge it and allow you to plug uh, controllers into the front. So choose whichever one you prefer. I'm gonna go ahead and put all the electronics in it. One important thing to note, now Nintendo does update their firmware all the time and they try to cut down on third-party accessories that are unauthorized. So it's possible that the charging circuit or anything like that in, in this arcade cabinet could stop working uh, at any time with a firmware update. There have also been some unauthorized accessories that have actually bricked switches. That obviously hasn't happened yet. I'm using the latest version of the firmware. I don't expect that to happen. This is just a simple USB-C hub. Uh, usually the ones that end up breaking the system are trying to extract video so that you can, you know, like third-party docks, which is what they're trying to avoid. So you're pretty safe here. Uh, use your own discretion. Obviously, I'm not responsible if you uh, mess your switch up. As with anything, you know, DIY has risks no matter what the project. So the full list of tools and materials is in the video description, but uh, I'm going to run through them quickly here. So you'll need some sort of epoxy to glue all the pieces together. You'll need this dual USB extension that'll go to the front. You'll need a hub, but not any hub will work. This model works specifically with this hub that I've linked to. And this one actually supplies the power separately, so you're not drawing power from your switch. So uh, this is the one to go with. You also need a USB-C extension that'll plug into the back, and then our charger will plug into this. Okay, this is a 5-volt USB fan that'll plug in as well. And this is super quiet, and this will help to extract the heat from the arcade cabinet so that your switch won't overheat. You'll need a separate AC adapter. If you use the one that came with your switch, then the switch thinks that it's plugged into the dock and it'll turn the screen off. Nintendo didn't really adhere to the USB-C spec. They've done some funky things with it, unfortunately. They probably should have just used their own connectors if they were gonna do that. Any uh, AC adapter that provides at least like 2.4 amps will be good. So I have this one from a Raspberry Pi and uh, obviously a USB-C cable to go along with it. Now, as you can see, I've already printed the parts and glued them together. That part's really straightforward. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to add all the components. I've already put the hub in here as well because you have to do it while you're putting it together. Well, it makes it much easier anyways. So putting them together on your own is actually very straightforward. Um, you shouldn't have any issues with that. Just use your epoxy and assemble it one at a time. Make sure you put the hub in first before you glue this final piece on. And then the top slides off so you can add your switch. There's also a 90 degree bend USB-C adapter in here that allows the, uh, the port to come up here. And plugged into that is the hub. I actually used two USB um, 90 degree angles that came with it to make it easier to connect after, if you needed to connect it after the fact. Okay, first I'm gonna go ahead and connect this extension. Well, it would appear that despite the one I ordered, they sent one that was slightly different and these holes are a little bit further apart. So if I put this through, it won't actually attach with the screws. So I'm just going to go ahead and slide this through instead. Uh, it's not a big deal. There we go. Still pretty decent. Not great. Maybe I'll cut out a little bit uh, later and push this up further. And this part plugs into the hub. Next, I'm going to attach the fan. So the fan goes on the inside and then the little controller slides into a hook on the back. Little slot and that way you can access the switches from the outside and adjust the fan speed. So we want the air to blow out, so we want the fins to be curved in the back. Okay, so you can go ahead and remove all these rubber feet. 
Okay, so this is the fan shroud. It goes on the inside and it points up. And we use the screws from the feet to secure it in place. This just slides right in place. You can use the remaining four screws from the other four vibration pads to secure it in place. Damn you giant hands. Oh yes, let's use our grill cover too. Okay, finally we're going to take our controller and we're going to slide it through this slot so it's accessible from the back. All right, it'll kind of snap into place there. It doesn't want to slide from the side, but that worked perfectly. Now you can see we have our speed control for the fan on the back. And we definitely want to put the wires towards the bottom here and zip tie them so that the airflow isn't blocked on the top. And now you can see I also routed the excess fan wires down beneath, zip tied them off. Everything's nice and neat now. Nothing's in the way of the fan. Okay, now one last thing that I'd like to do is add some rubber feet on the bottom. And you can do this by using the little rubber things that came with the fan, or if you have some stick-on ones, that'll work too. I'm going to connect them using these M5 metric screws that I have lying around. If you do projects like this a lot, I recommend picking up a kit like this. It has pretty much every kind of like socket head cap screw you need um, for projects like this. There we go. That's nice. Rubber feet. Oh, they're like suction cups. Didn't expect that. Again, if you connect the normal switch adapter, the screen will turn off because it thinks it's connected to a dock. So I'm gonna use this anchor one that I found for a couple bucks and it's 2.4 amps, five volts. So slide the lid off, slide your switch into place, put the lid back on. And connect your AC adapter in the back. You can see the fan kicks on. You have the uh, fan speed controls on the back here. You can turn it off. I have it on high. And there you have it. So this is a data hub. So you can use the ports on the front to pair and charge your controller. Pretty much anything else you could normally do. You can see the uh, amber lights on. It's charging the controller. So you could also plug in USB controllers to use with this like you could on the normal hub. The only thing that's strange that I, that I um, noticed is... If you have the arcade cabinet plugged in and then you slide your switch in, sometimes it won't charge. It's kind of strange. But if you put your switch in place and then plug in the power cable into the hub in the back, then it works every time. So that's probably just some little finicky thing with Nintendo trying to, you know, control the uh, or alter the USB-C spec for their needs, which is not really a, a good thing to do. Now this has been a super fun, super easy project. I love having this thing on my desk so I can pop in and play a game or two when I need a break. I think this cabinet is a testament to the spirit of the maker community, blending mainstream gaming with 3D printing and hobby electronics, and I'm very happy that it exists. If you enjoyed this video, then perhaps you'd like to subscribe. We do cool videos like this all the time, like this creepy Amazon Echo Furby thing, or this Google Home Magic Mirror, or these many Raspberry Pi retro gaming things. Anyways, be sure to check out my site, howto.com, for more great how-to and DIY guides for makers, tinkerers, programmers, woodworkers, and everyone in between. And as always, thank you very much for watching.